Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Bless your name. Come on, church, are you ready to praise Him today? Come on, hey. Come on, put your hands like this. Come on, hey. I want to give you one new teaser And hold nothing in reason No matter, no matter how I'm feeling I still believe it's one new teaser Oh, my praise, oh, my praise Oh, belongs to you, belongs to you Oh, my praise belongs to you Amen. Belongs to you. Come on, church, are you ready? Let's shout it out. Shout it to the world. You're the greatest. Sing it till it's heard. You're the greatest. It's what you deserve. You're the greatest. Jesus, I will lift your name. I'm I. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Want to give you what you deserve. Hold nothing in reason No matter what, no matter how I'm feeling I still believe it's what you deserve Come on, all my praise, my praise Oh, belongs to you All my praise belongs to you All my praise, amen Belongs to you Come on, church, are you ready? Oh, shout it to the attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period.
church, wherever you are, we're going to praise his name forever. Amen. Oh, one, two, three, come on. Let everything that has been praised the Lord be worthy to be Everybody shout unto the Lord. Come on, church, you shout. Oh, we lift you higher, sing it wonderful. By your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus. You are here. As we lifting up your name, lifting up your name, you are here. As we're giving, as we're giving you the praise, giving you the praise. The kingdom of God is released in this atmosphere. Where freedom, where freedom and praise. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, 
it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period.
Hello and welcome to SIBKL online service. So good to see so many of you early for service today. I'm Jeffrey and I'm one of the pastors here in SIBKL. It's the last weekend of February and time really flies. And despite whatever lockdown or whatever restrictions that we had uh, over the Chinese New Year celebration, I trust that you have had a great time celebrating Chinese New Year with your family and friends. And even as we enter into March, uh, do share with us what you're doing uh, even in the month of March, be it your ministry or your own life. And you're watching this service live, can you please share by using the chat room uh, where you're tuning in from and we would truly like to connect with you. We are so glad that you are with us. If you remember last weekend, we started on the overview of the book of Revelation. Uh, do type in the chat room as well something that you're looking forward about the study of Revelation. And in a short while, we are going to worship our great God and King. And I believe that God is right here where you are. And God has a table prepared for you. I believe that there will be healing for those who need it there will be hope for those who need it and there will be restoration for those of you who are seeking restoration. So may this sense of the presence of God be in your home. So let's take a few moments now even to pray and to commit this time to God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you Lord that even uh, despite whatever restrictions that we face uh, even in this COVID-19 situation, we thank you for technology that although we cannot meet physically, O Lord, we are not disconnected from you, we are not disconnected from one another. And even as we join our hearts together and worship you, I pray, O Lord, that it will be a wonderful time that we can spend together worshipping you and sitting at your feet to learn from you, O Lord. So may you truly bless this time together, even as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So now let's have a look at our SIB KL News. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. The El Pito Healing Ministry will be hosting a session titled Look to the Healer and Be Healed. Our speaker, Pastor Gilbert Wee, will be sharing based of Luke chapter 6, verse 19. He is part of the prayer, healing and deliverance ministry and has since been anointed to pray for the sick and those held captive by spiritual darkness. 
We welcome everyone who is looking for healing to join this session and be blessed. More details will be shown on the screen. Want to keep up with your prayer life? Our Saturday morning prayer altar will be starting from 6 March onwards. Starting time and Zoom link will be shown on the screen. So come, join us for a time of intercession and connecting with God. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. Come on church, put your hands together if you can. Let's give God the glory today, wherever you're at in your living room. I've come to you with a grateful heart for the things you've done. I've come to you giving all my praise for this day you made. You're amazing. My God, come on, there's no one like you. There's no one like you, none beside you. My God, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I will lift your name up. In all I do, I will give you praise. Everywhere I go, I will lift your name up. I lift your name up. Not to lift you high I come to you Every night and day Not to give you praise You're amazing Forever reigning My God There's no one like you None beside you My God When we sing everywhere I go Everywhere I go I will lift your name in all I do, I will give you praise Everywhere I go, I will lift your name up I lift your name up
Whatever comes my way Whatever comes my way I will lift you up Giving you my praise I will never stop Your surrounding babe Your love overflows I will lift your name Everywhere I go Come on, we sing everywhere I go And everywhere I go I will lift your name up In all I do I will give you praise Everywhere I go I will lift your name up I lift your name up circumstance let's look at him today yes Lord and no one can move like Jesus does no one can love like Jesus love oh he can change the hardest heart nothing else but Jesus' love No one can say Like Jesus says He is greater than everything I face And I will serve For all my days Nothing else but Jesus I want us to declare this together
Hallelujah. Truly, Jesus, you are Lord over everything. For there is no one else like you. There is no one else who can truly uh, bring forth healing, who can truly comfort us, O Lord. And truly, you are the King of generations. And truly, Jesus, we want to worship you. We want to bless you because there is truly no one who is worthy to be praised. And even in this atmosphere of worship, let us remember those who are in need of a healing touch from our Lord. And right now, even as you're watching from home, can I request you to stretch your hands even towards these names that are listed on screen. We want to remember our sister Yap, uh, who is suffering from the right neck which is swollen. Uh, she's suffering dizziness and chest tightness as well. We pray in Jesus' name uh, that the numbness and pain in her hands and legs will be gone in Jesus' name, Lord, that you bring forth the healing that truly Sister Yap will be healed in Jesus' name. We pray, O Lord, even for Emmanuel uh, and, and Brother Francis, that even for Emmanuel, as he's suffering from breathing difficulty, neck pain, stiffness, and, and chest and leg pain, I pray in Jesus' name, O Lord, that you remove the fatigue from him, O Lord. And I pray, O Lord, that you will truly restore a clear vision that even he had uh, this head operation I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that Emmanuel, that, like even as his name suggests, that truly God is with Emmanuel and that he will be healed. And we pray for Brother Francis, that even as he suffered this chest pain, in Jesus' name, that his chest will be clear and strengthened. And for those of us who are tuned in uh, this morning, if you're watching and you need a healing touch from the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that even as you stretch forth your hand towards the Lord, that healing and breakthrough will come to you, Lord. So Lord Jesus, you see these hands that are lifted up to you, Lord. And I pray that even as they trust you, you will truly bring forth the healing you will bring forth that breakthrough that they are looking for and we pray all this in jesus name and all of god's people say amen and amen church are you ready to hear the word of god i know that you are going to be absolutely blessed by this message so let's hear the sermon right now Hello everybody, welcome to our SIBKL online service. My name is John, I'm one of the pastors here and it's so good to have you today with us. We have transited into a new series and I'm quite excited about this series. It's actually a series on the book of Revelations. Last week we had an overview of the entire book this week, we are going to have an overview of the seven letters to the seven churches found in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3. Now, I'm not going to open it up, but I encourage you to read through it in your own time or the pause this stream or video and have a quick look at it and then come back here. We are going to be doing from the pulpit the seven letters to the seven churches However, later on in the year, in sometime in May, I believe, our senior pastor, Pastor Chu, is actually going to be doing a more in-depth and thorough study of every chapter and every verse in the book of Revelations. There's going to be a special seminar that you need to sign up for. So look out for the information and when the opportunity arises, jump onto it, get into it. But let's first and foremost have a broad overview of the seven letters to the seven churches here. Now, why the number seven or why these seven churches? First of all, the number seven in the Bible represents a completion or the number of perfection, a whole set, if you like. Seven goes throughout the Bible. In the beginning, God created the world and rested in seven days. And if we look at the different feasts, like for example, the Passover that the Jewish people had, they will last seven days. Even in Revelation, the number seven 
runs throughout. There's the seven plagues, the seven bowls, the seven lampstands, seven crowns, seven heel, hills, and seven, seven, lots of number sevens there. It's, it represents a complete set, wholeness. Just like when you were to purchase something, you will want to buy a whole set. I don't know whether any of you are into this thing called the Thermomix, also known as the German made. Any of you have that? When you buy something like a Thermomix, you will buy the whole set. The mixer, the bowls, the motors, whatever it is, you will want the whole set. If you were to watch a series, a K-drama series, for example, or any, any show, you will want to watch the whole series. You don't want to stop halfway or only start towards the end. You want to watch the whole thing. You want to see the complete picture of what the story is about. For those of us who are into suits, you know, like where we buy out or different outfits, you will want to buy the whole set. Uh, some of you got matching couple tees. I don't know, right? You want a whole set to that as well. And when we look at these seven letters to the seven churches, what we can see that this is actually Jesus' message to the seven churches, a complete message for all the churches represented at that point of time, even up till now. So as we look at the book of Revelation, as we look at the seven letters to the seven churches, it is not just a study, but it's a message from the Lord to you and I, not just to the church, but to each and every one of us as Christians. Now, where were these seven churches located? They were based in this region called Asia Minor. Now, Asia Minor today is known as the country Turkey. If you know your geography a little bit, you will know that Turkey is actually a connecting point between Europe and Africa and Asia. If you don't believe me, go and whip out Google Maps now, or if you still have a globe, it's still spinny little things in your house, go take a look at that. And not only was Asia Minor the connecting point between two different continents, it was also the place of a major trading and economic region. And the seven churches were in seven cities that were the main locations, if you were like, in Asia Minor. So I'm going to pull up this map here. If you look at this map, you will see that these cities are kind of arranged like in a formation, a circular formation. So very often, a merchant would start off his or her trading route in the city of Ephesus. And from Ephesus, they would go all the way up to Smyrna. And from Smyrna to Pergamum, or also known as Pegamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, coming back down to Philadelphia, and then Laodicea. So the reason why John wrote this set, this um, the book of Revelation, as well as a message to these churches in this region, is because as the letters were going to each city, it will also now ensure that the message will be passed on to different continents and different regions. The, the route that I just mentioned to you was also the imperial postage route of the Roman Empire. So that's how they would distribute letters. And back then, when it distributed letters to the churches, it wasn't just for personal consumption. It was to be read out in public to the whole church. So this was the message that John was giving to the seven churches from Jesus via the Holy Spirit. And on top of that, John, at this point of time, John the Apostle, who was the author of the book of Revelations, was exiled in the island of Patmos, which was just off Asia Minor. So it would have been easy for him, easier for him rather, to get this letter across. Now, as we look at this seven letters to the seven churches, an overview, I've highlighted key similarities. Each churches have their own distinctions and differences, but I will highlight some of the similarities that Jesus speaks to these churches and we can apply it for our message or study today. The first thing is this, in each and every one of his messages or letters to the churches, Jesus says this, I know. 
I know what you are going through. I know what you are struggling with. I know what you are battling. I know what you are also not doing rightly. And when God says, I know, it is both a comfort and a challenge. It is both comforting to know that God knows our struggles and our troubles, but also challenging to realize that God knows our complacency, He knows our sin, He knows our hypocrisy, even when we think nobody else notices. This is saying, Jesus comes to comfort the disturbed, but He also disturbs the comfortable. As we go about this study, I pray that God will not only comfort those of us who, comfort, who needs comfort, but He will also challenge and encourage some of us to go to the next level of our faith. So when Jesus says, I know, He knows what the seven churches are going through and what they are doing. And right here, I want to show you, Jesus had commendations for all the churches except Laodicea. If you look at this chart, you will see in Ephesus, the Lord says, I recognize you are a persevering and hardworking and discerning church. In Smyrna, He knows that they are an afflicted church. They are poor and He knows how they are being slandered and accused falsely. In Pergamum, the Lord knows that they are faithful even though they are in the midst of a corrupted culture and facing persecution. In Thyatira, the Lord commends them that they are faithful, loving, persevering, going the extra mile. And in the church of Sardis, He mentions few of them have not soiled their clothes. They have kept their purity and are walking in the light. And in Philadelphia, the Lord says of this church, I know the deeds. I know your deeds. I know that you are, in spite of being weak, you are still enduring patiently. And this is a comfort for many of us because the Lord knows what we are going through. And we only need the Lord's recognition and acknowledgement. Paul echoes this in Galatians 1 verse 10 where he says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God or am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I will not be a servant of Christ. Very often as we live out our Christianity, as we serve God, as we exercise our faith, the one person that we should look to impress or to get approval from is God Himself. It doesn't matter if we don't get credit. It doesn't matter if other people doesn't recognize what we are doing. What matters is that God knows. And I hope that is of comfort to some of us listening today. But yet the Lord, if you look at across the seven letters, the Lord says, I know, but He also adds, yet. I know you're doing all this, yet. And right now, I want to show you the concerns that the Lord had for these seven churches. Open up this chart here and you will see, for Ephesus, He was concerned that they have forsaken their first love. For Smyrna, he, the Lord actually doesn't mention anything because He's quite sympathetic towards Smyrna, how they were uh, poor and afflicted. But for Pergamon, He was concerned how some of them were holding to false teachings or practicing sexual immorality and even holding on to the teaching of the Nicolaitans, teachings that did not line up with Christianity. For Thyatira, the Lord says that they tolerate the spirit of Jezebel which has misled many to sexual immorality and eating food sacrificed to idols. That's a very interesting topic right there, but I won't go into it. For Sardis, he's concerned that while they look alive on the outside, but on the inside, they are dead. Oh, I wonder how many of us have the appearance of faith, but on the inside, we need a touch or regeneration from the Lord. For Laodicea, he is concerned for the church, how they, their wealth has caused them to become complacent. They think they are okay, but the Lord says in reality, strong words, they are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. And I wonder, as we look at this chart, 
How many of us can identify with some of the words that are on the screen? Or how many of us are actually going through some of these things where the Lord commends us for doing certain things, but in other areas of our life, the Lord has some concerns. And I want us to recognize that when the Lord points something out, when God points something out in our lives, it's not to condemn us, it's actually to convict us and then to correct us because the Lord wants us to grow. The Lord wants us to become better. Proverbs 3 verses 11 to 13 says this, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent His rebuke because the Lord disciplines those He loves. And as a father, the son He delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding. When we heed the Lord's correction, we will gain wisdom and understanding. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says this, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. And as we listen, as we go through this series of the seven churches, it is a good time now to examine our faith to test ourselves. Why? Because a faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. It is actually not a bad thing to put our own faith, not the faith of others, not the life of others, but our own under scrutiny so that we can see what areas can we improve in. Now, it's not again a self-condemning thing or it's not a a thing where we want to be critical of ourselves uh, too much. No, we want to better ourselves. We want to ensure that we are on the right path. It's like when you have a car, I don't know whether many of you actually do this. If you don't, you should. You know, if you have a car, if you go and check your tire pressure quite often, what you, or if you check your car or if you check the oil levels and all that, what you would do is you will go and scrutinize every part of the car. Some of you who are car lovers do this every day, right? You scrutinize every part of the car. You make sure there's enough pressure in the tires. You make sure there's enough water in the radiators. Make sure the oil levels are okay. Make sure the fuel levels are okay. Make sure everything's okay. The coolant's all right. And as we do that, what are we doing? We are not saying the car is bad or evil or, is, or, or needs to now to be corrected all the time. No, we are ensuring that the car continues to be able to perform at its peak performance without any interruptions or troubles. And the same for us. When we scrutinize, when we take a look at our faith, we want to see that we are walking right with the Lord, that we are walking in step with what God wants us to do. Now, the other thing that I noticed in the seven letters is God uses this phrase very, in all letters. He says this, He who has ears, let him hear. That's a strange thing, right? Because most of us have ears. I, I, I think that's quite a safe assumption. All of us have ears. But it's one thing to actually hear. It's another thing to actually really listen. Those of us who have kids would know this. You tell your kids, do this. They hear you, but they don't necessarily will actually listen and follow through with what you want to do. Those of us with husbands would also experience that, right? We tell our husbands, please do this. Please fix the light bulb. Please go and service the car. Please take out the trash. And they just go, oh. Ah, A, oh, <laughs> and they acknowledge it, but they may, you know, it's a different thing if they actually follow true, whether they are actually listening to what we are saying. And in the same manner, God is always speaking. God constantly speaks. In fact, none of us Christians and believers should ever say, God has not spoken to me, and yet our Bible remains closed. No, God has spoken through the Word of God, and He's continued to speak. And He wants to speak even through our study of the book of Revelations. Isaiah 6 verse 9, there's a charge by God where He says, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Ever seeing, but never perceiving. I don't want to be that type of person where I hear, but I don't understand where I see, but I don't actually see. And the key for us as believers is simply this. James 1 verse 22, where it says, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling 
themselves, yourselves. How many of us can, you know, we have go to church, we listen to sermon up after sermon after sermon, we've been to conferences, seminars, we've been to prayer meetings and all these different things. We have heard so much, so much, we've heard so many things, so many times in this age of, um, in this digital age, but how much of it has actually become internalized into our hearts and we are walking it out. That's why Jesus says, He who has ears, let him hear. When these letters were received by the church, what they would do is they would open it up and they would read it to the whole church. And that's what the Lord says, He who has ears, let them hear. So across the seven letters, I mentioned Christ had some concerns and He had some commendations. And now I want to show you the charge that He had for each church. For Ephesus, He tells them to remember and repent and remember His grace. Return to their first love. In Smyrna, He tells them to do not fear, to remain faithful in the midst of persecution, even to the point of death. Pergamum, he says, repent or face judgment. In Tithira, he tells them to reject the spirit of Jezebel. In Sardis, he tells them to wake up. Wake up. In Philadelphia, he says to continue holding on and they will be vindicated at the end. In Laodicea, he invites the church to come and trade with him. Not just trade in the world, but to trade with him, to put on white linens, to apply salve to their eyes, to see as how God would see. And I know that as we go through this study, there'll be lots of things that we can pick up across the sermons of the seven letters to churches. And I hope that we would have ears to hear. And the other thing, that's quite commonplace across these letters is that Christ will crown us with rewards. Christ will give rewards to these churches depending on their obedience. Listen to this. God's rewards are predicated upon our responses. God wants to reward and bless us but it is up to us to choose whether we want to respond to Him, whether we want to seek Him, whether we want to follow His ways. Deuteronomy 30 verse 15 to 16 says this, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him and to keep His commands, decrees and laws, and then you will live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Elsewhere, Matthew 6, 19, 20 says this, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. And what kind of reward we will get from Christ is exactly those kind of rewards where moths, and thieves cannot touch it where there will be no decay. And I want to have that kind of blessing and that kind of reward from God. But it is up to us to respond, to say yes to God. It is not up to me or anybody else here to convince us that this is the way to go. No, we have to decide that yes, I want to follow Jesus. I can't just ride on the faith of my spouse. I can't just ride on the faith of my parents or my grandparents or my friend. No, I have to make that decision. And if you see, what does Christ crown these churches with? Really quickly, let me show you. In Ephesus, He crowns them with the fruit from the tree of life. In Smyrna, He tells them, I will give you the crown of life and I will keep you from the second death. For Pergamum, he says, I will give you hidden manna from heaven, white stones with a new name. In Thyatira, he tells them, I will give you the rule over the nations and the morning star. In the church of Sardis, he says that they will walk with Jesus. They will be clothed in white and they will not have their names blotted out and they will have acknowledgement from God their Father. The church of Philadelphia, 
They will be protected. I, I want this. They will be protected from a great time of testing. They'll be given victory and made pillars in the temple of God and be given citizenship in heaven. For the church of Laodicea, they will give, God will give them the ultimate victory to sit on the throne with Jesus. All of this is contingent and dependent on whether they respond and obey what God has said to them. So when God comes with us with concerns and charges, we can't just swat him off or rule him out like he's like some naggy parent or uh, a naggy authority figure. No, we must trust that indeed God wants the best for us and our lives. Not our best, but His best. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8 says this, Therefore, my dearest brother, brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And the last thing, the last thing I, I, want, I notice across these seven letters is Christ. Christ is present in all seven letters. He identifies Himself. He is the great I Am coming to the churches, coming to you and I to speak to us. So let me show you the title of Christ in all seven letters. In Ephesus, He's called the one who holds the seven stars and walks among the seven lampstands. In Smyrna, he is the one who is first and last, who died and came to life again. In Pergamum, he calls himself the one who wields the sharp, double-edged sword. In Thyatira, he identifies himself as the one whose eyes are blazing fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. In Sardis, he tells them he is the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. In Philadelphia, he is the one who is holy and true, who holds the key of David, and he alone opens and closes doors. In Laodicea, he is of the Amen, the faithful one and the true ruler of God's creation. These are the titles of Christ. Now, you may not completely understand each and every one of them, but know this, that, this, that God is present. He is present in all seven letters, present in all seven unique situations. So He's also present now in all of our lives, in your lives. No matter what you are going through, no matter what state your faith is in, trust that God has a message for you this morning as well as the upcoming studies in the seven churches that we will be having. And I will sum up by reminding us that in the seven churches or the seven letters to seven churches, God says, I know. He knows you and I. But yet, there are some areas that God wants to point out. Not to judge us, not to condemn us, but as he, we respond to His charge, God wants to actually now reward us, bless us. But most importantly, God is present, the Christ in the letters. And I mentioned in the start of the sermon that the letter, the number seven is a number of completion, of wholeness, of perfection. And do you know that Jesus has seven I am's? And this is what he says about himself. The seven I am's of Jesus. First of all, Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus also says that I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus also declares that He is the good shepherd. He is the gate. He is the light of the world. He is the bread of life and He is the true vine. This is who Jesus is. And this is what he has to say to the seven churches. And more importantly, not just the seven churches that we are about to study, but the words or the declaration, the promises that God wants to give us to our lives, even as we embark on this study. I hope this study, I hope this overview rather, helps you and gives you a 
prepares you rather for what is to come in the coming weeks. Right now, I just want us to respond to today's message. I hope some part of the message spoke to you and I trust that you got something. But as we go along this study, it is not about gaining more knowledge, but it's about knowing God more. And let's respond to Jesus today. Come, let's sing this song together. You're able to do it. I know you can. Because God, you are faithful to move again. This mountain, it seems big. So Jesus, I'm grateful to the very end. I can hear your voice singing over me. I'm free indeed. I can feel your power washing over me. Savior
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. You know, today could have been a little bit more theological or more teaching-like than what you're used to. But I know that this is a message for you and I in this time and this season that God knows what we are going through. God knows. And whatever that you are facing right now, I want you to trust that God has a greater plan. I want you to trust in Him. I want you to know that if you hold tight, like how He said to some of these churches there, to endure, to correct what needs to be corrected, but to endure, you will see the good hand of the Lord coming upon you. For those of you who feel like you're losing steam, even in this midst of this online environment, I want to urge you to keep on keeping on because you will see the Lord soon. Not in the, you know, in a way that uh, you think, but you will see the hand and blessing of God upon your life. But if you have any prayer needs, I want to encourage you right now to go into our prayer online uh, room, which is going to be here. You can see this link connect with someone get someone to pray with you and pray for you and if you have anyone or, or know anybody who wants to receive Christ for the very first time I want to encourage you to get them to come to this link as well and if you are attending or watching this and you're not connected to us as a community yet can I encourage you can I urge you why don't you get connected today find a ministry uh, either a youth group uh, within our church or a cell group or even a older generational group you can find you can go to this link and find out how you can be connected because these churches they were communities they were letters not written to individuals but communities and this year our theme is together we overcome the togetherness and indeed we will overcome together amen Come, let me close in prayer right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all these people listening in. I pray that as we listen to what was being expounded and taught today, we will indeed start a journey of not just learning, but applying and internalizing what we hear over the next couple of weeks. I pray, Lord, that you speak and you continue to speak to us throughout this series. That way, Lord, we can draw closer to you and that way we can indeed become more than overcomers as what your word says. We thank you, Lord. We give you back all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church and faith family for tuning in. God bless you and we'll see you again. Get connected to us. Get prayer if you need to. But for now, bye-bye. See you again. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. If you would like to give, you can go to this giving link and all the giving details will be there for you. Thank you for sowing into God's kingdom this season. You are a blessing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay connected for the latest content. Follow us on our social media platforms at SIBKL Church on Facebook and Instagram. You can also visit our website at sibkl.org.my for more info about our church. Stay updated on the latest sermons on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise
praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Bless your name. Praise God who saved my soul. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name. Oh, praise you, Lord. Come on, church. Are you ready to praise Him today? Come on. Hey. Come on, put your hands like this. Come on, hey. I want to give you one new teaser And hold nothing in reason. No matter, no matter how I'm feeling, I still believe it's one new teaser Oh, my praise, oh, my praise all oh, belongs to you. Belongs to you. Oh, my praise belongs to you. Oh, my praise. Amen. Belongs to you. Come on, church, are you ready? Let's shout it out. Shout it to the world. You're the greatest. Sing it till it's heard. You're the greatest. It's what you deserve. You're the greatest. Jesus, I will lift your name. I'm I, oh, Jesus. Come on. want to give you what you deserve. And hold nothing in no matter what, no matter how I'm feeling, I still believe it's what you deserve. Come on, all my praise, all my praise, oh, belongs to you. All my praise belongs to you. All my praise, amen, belongs to you. Come on, church, are you ready? Oh, shout it to the world. The attributes of Jesus the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period.
Attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10pm weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our Overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30pm on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. Attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, 
Let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. The attributes of Jesus, the work and ministry of Christ, the passion of Jesus, on the cross, it is finished. In this Lent season, let's take some time together to journey through a five-week devotional at 10 p.m. weeknights for 10 minutes as we reflect on the life of Jesus, our overcomer. You're also invited to join us for our Tuesday night prayer altars from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. on Zoom as we look to Jesus and remember His work on the cross throughout this Lent period. So Lord, today we fix our eyes on You. We worship You. We say, God, You are so worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for 